Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is dismissing the results of the election. And he did so after a reporter uh, asked him this. Take a look. Uh, is the State Department currently preparing to engage with the Biden transition team? And if not, at what point does a delay hamper a smooth transition or pose a risk to national security? There will be a smooth transition to a second Trump administration. All right, we're, we're ready. The, the world is watching what's taking place here. We're gonna count all the votes. When the process is complete, there'll be electors selected. There's a process, the constitution lays it out pretty clearly. The world should have every confidence that the transition necessary to make sure that the State Department is functional today, successful today, and successful with the president who's in office on January 20th, a minute afternoon, will also be successful. All right, so that's funny. Uh, you're a funny guy, Mike Pompeo, you authoritarian monster. Real funny. Uh, look, the fact that he's smirking about it thinks that this is a joke. It it's not a it's not a joke. It's democracy. I mean, the whole thing where he's like, "Oh man, uh, yeah, it, it's it's you know, <laughs> you know, we're getting ready for a smooth transition into Trump's second term." <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? There are some legitimate concerns the Trump administration with their refusal to concede the election that they're trying to steal the thing. When you're not exactly giving people any sort of faith that you're not also in on trying to steal the damn thing. So, look, he knows. He's, he's fanning the flames. Of course, that's all they're doing. It's, they're fanning the flames for their fan base, for the Trump fan base, to go and scream about, voter fraud, it's voter fraud! And look, even if it's a joke, even as a joke, which, by the way, this guy's a joke. Uh, he's still putting it into people's heads that the election is being stolen with mail-in ballots. I, again, talking about, oh, we're going to count all the legal ballots. Again, that's the rhetoric that they're using to basically say that, well, we don't believe that the mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania, for example, because this is what they've been challenging, uh, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Arizona, we don't think that they're legal. We don't think that they're valid. We don't think that they should count. Because if you take those away, Donald Trump wins. That's what that is. But he knows. And the thing is, he's the Secretary of State. It, it is deeply irresponsible for the Secretary of State to do something like this. Again, every vote should be counted. Absolutely. If it is received by the time that it was supposed to be received by, uh, and it was filled out properly... And it, there should be, and it was verified, there should be no reason that you shouldn't count those votes. None. At all. There's no evidence of widespread voter fraud. Okay? There's no evidence to back up the fact, the, the, the idea uh, that Biden stole the election. That only, you know, Trump only lost because Trump's like super popular, which polls do not bear out. Um and, and, and that we only lost to Biden because the Democrats went out of their way to steal an election. Are you kidding me? Again, no evidence. And how do I know this, right? Uh, well, they've had ample opportunity to prove their case in court, to present that evidence. They also had, during the administration, a um, commission on voter fraud, which is supposed to uncover this vast... A network of fraudulent votes. And what happened? Well, they found nothing. They found not a bupkis dick. Nothing. Nothing. A sketchy YouTube video is not evidence. Okay? A post-it note, which they used in Michigan to try to prove their case, is not evidence. You've got to have something concrete. You've got to show up, and you've got to have receipts. They don't have the receipts. You've got to show something that the votes were tampered with. And, and, and they don't have it, or else they would have already presented it by now. It would have been presented in court, and you could say, oh, man, wow, look at that. Uh, wow, there's, there's your evidence of widespread. And it's not just proving one or two cases, too. And that's the other thing about this, right? You, you know, you can look at the amount of votes that were cast in the last 10 years. And, you know, those are hundreds of millions of votes. And you could find maybe 
10 cases of possible voter fraud, but only a couple of those, or I should say 10 allegations of credible voter fraud. And even then, maybe one or two of those actually resulted in a successful conviction. Because usually what happens is somebody makes a mistake on their ballot. So where's your widespread voter fraud? It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And again, if you want to look into irregularities, sure, that's fine. And if you do, usually you'll end up finding something that's human error or mechanical error or software. That's what happened in Michigan. Remember, there was a county in Michigan uh, that erroneously gave votes to Joe Biden. Now, Ronna McDaniel Romney, she goes and says, oh, my God, look, that's, that's voter fraud. No, that city is headed by a Republican. Uh, and they said, no, we had an error. It was human error. We have fixed it. And that's the thing. But they again, they're pointing to these irregularities as proof of a malicious plot to, uh, you know, overthrow Donald Trump. When in reality, always bet on stupid. Always bet on mistakes. Because usually that's what happens. Uh, but again, that's not stopping Republicans from trying to use this as a way to do, I think, a soft coup by making their followers have zero faith in the electoral process, which, again, could lead to uh, evidence or not evidence, but uh, incidences of stochastic terrorism. Because if you say, oh, your vote doesn't matter, why, uh, you know. Well, why would you count on the system? Because it's being stolen from you. America's being stolen from you. It's right before your eyes. Biden is stealing the election. The Democrats are stealing the election. The media is stealing the election from you. Well, then what are you going to do if, if, if you don't think your vote matters anymore? No, there's a couple of uh, things that you could do. Completely withdraw, which is not what Republicans want you to do. They want you to continue to vote, to vote in people like Mitch McConnell and John James and, you know, whatever conservative flunky. But there's the other thing that you could do. And that's grab your gun. And we've already seen instances of that. We've already seen people trying to, uh, you know, attempt to, I mean, kidnap the governor of Michigan. These armed militias, these people who are absolutely batshit insane. They don't believe that the system works anymore. Tucker Carlson also sowing the seeds, and he has been doing so all along. These are Republican officials. Same thing. All they're, they're all saying, don't trust it. Don't trust the votes. Our system, our electoral system. Look, our electoral system has some major problems. I think the Electoral College needs to go. It's undemocratic. It is a, it's an old slavery uh, you know, system. It's, it's a system that is built around slavery or at the time of slavery. Um it needs to go. It's outdated. It's old. Uh, also, I believe that we do need to move away from some of these voting machines uh, that are susceptible to hacks, uh, that are privately manufactured, you know, by corporations that would have a, a vested interest, uh, possibly. Um, and we should do hand kind of paper ballots to verify election results. We should definitely do all of those things because there are issues with our voter system and there are issues that we can fix we can solve. Notice how Republicans, they never have real solutions. Their solutions always involve voter suppression. And so that's the other thing, denying people their rights to vote. And so getting back to Trump, however, uh, Donald Trump, look, here's the thing. Okay. What's funny about Trump and the people now that are saying, oh, my God, you can't trust the system. They seem to have trusted trust the system just perfectly last time, back in 2016, when they, I don't know, when they won. They're like, oh, accept the vote. You must accept it today. You must accept it now. Hillary Clinton, you must concede today. And they were getting pissed off and pissed off that she took, what, three days to concede? And then she, yes, she eventually did concede. Uh, and she said, look, she wasn't happy about it. Uh, but she never said the votes for fraudulent. There was the whole Russia thing, which is, you know, some elements of truth to it and a lot of spin and a lot of hyperbole uh, and a lot of ridiculousness involved in that. Um, but never did she say that the votes people cast were fraudulent. Whereas Trump, 
even though he won the Electoral College, he lost by 3 million votes, the popular vote. And he says, well, those, those don't count because I shouldn't have lost at all. No, no. Uh, and that, of course, uh, is as a result of him not understanding that he's a, an unpopular person and an even more unpopular president, which leads to people like Lindsey Graham saying ridiculous stuff like this. Take a look. If Republicans don't challenge and change the U.S. election system, there'll never be another Republican president elected again. Never be a Republican ever uh, elected again if you don't change the system. And by change, they mean make sure that nobody votes by mail. Which before the election was a perfectly valid way of voting and is still a valid way of voting. And in fact, three Supreme Court justices that are now in the court that weren't uh, that actually worked on George W. Bush's uh, legal team in Florida actually said, no, we must have all the mail-in ballots because it happened to a favored George W. Bush at the time. And so there is, <laughs> I mean, there is a there is a rank hypocrisy in the Republican argument against these uh, kinds of ballots. Um, and look, Mitch McConnell is also saying things like. Uh, no states have certified their election results, which is true. We don't go through certification uh, until later. Uh, and so once those uh, uh, results are certified, then you're going to have the electors that go and meet. This is how the process works every time. So why are they making a big deal now? And say, oh, they're not certified. They're not certified. They usually don't get certified before, uh, you know, around this time. Usually it takes some time. And by then... There's been a concession by the other side. That has not happened this side. And so it's not happened this time. It's not happened this time. Uh, all right. And so you also had Trump appointee Emily Murphy, the administrator of the General Services Administration, blocking the transition of power from starting by refusing to issue the Biden team necessary documents. Sources familiar with the matter told the New York Times on Monday. So they're also doing this. They're just saying, no, 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 no. We're not going to have a transition of power at all. No, no, no. And so, I mean, what else can you call it than a soft coup? Uh, again, nobody likes a sore loser, right? The important thing here to remember is not how much of a baby Donald Trump is. It's the fact that there are people that are willing to go along with the coup. People like Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, Ronna McDaniel Romney, Mike Pompeo, and others, they know better, they all know better, and yet are determined to undermine trust in our electoral system, in American democracy overall. And this is going to have negative effects that will ripple forward. Uh, I mean, you're gonna, you now have a significant amount of the country that is no longer interested in accepting the results of an election. Or listening to factual information as it gets reported by the media. Again, there are so many people that are angry at media sources. They're angry at Fox News, angry at CNN for calling Arizona, uh, Fox News for calling Arizona, sorry. And so, and angry at CNN for calling states for Joe Biden. That's why nobody wanted to make that first call, even though we knew it was over for Pennsylvania. And so that's a big, big, big problem. Okay, that's a huge problem in this country that's not going to go away when Donald Trump leaves office. Okay, and so we need to figure out how to restore trust, not only in the media, and I've got a few ideas on that, uh, but also to fix our electoral system so that people can get trust back in that as well. Uh, because in a democracy, if nobody trusts the electoral system anymore, well, then what's to stop us from descending into outright violence? That is not a place where I want to go. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.